Thank you for watching part one of Love 40 Tennis's racket stringing series. Of course, before you learn specifically how to string a racket, it is important to know when to string a racket. And this video will be about how to tell when you need to string your racket. Many people have heard the tennis axiom that the number of times you play tennis in a week is the number of times you should string your racket annually. This has to be one of the most ridiculous teachings or adages in all of tennis. Think about it. It tries to provide a rational formula based solely on completely inadequate information. The number of times one plays tennis per week does not specify at all the amount of tennis one plays. Are you doing light hitting with a ball machine for 30 minutes, or are you playing two full sets? It also doesn't take into account the player's hitting style or ability. More serious or competitive players put more wear on their strings in a given amount of time than a recreational player would. Top spin shots create more wear on strings than a flat shot would because the ball is in contact with the strings longer on each hit, wearing them down more quickly. And lastly, the axiom doesn't even take into account the size or gauge and type of string both of which impact durability as well. All else being equal, a thicker string, meaning a lower gauge number, will be more durable, and a monofilament poly will be more durable than multifilaments. So the axiom is useless. Don't go by it, it makes no sense, and at best it is an oversimplification to the point of it being useless. Okay, now that we've settled that, now that we have that out of the way, how does one seriously judge whether they need to restring their racket? First, it is important to understand that different types of strings will fail, that is, lose their liveliness, in different fashions. Multifilaments, commonly billed as arm or elbow friendly strings, will fray as they wear down. The individual microfilaments will tear successively, and you will actually see the string get thinner with frayed microfilaments on either side of the thinnest portion of the remaining string. While synthetic gut strings have a solid core, they also have microfilaments on the exterior that will show similar fraying. In addition to the fraying, these microfilaments will often trap and accumulate felt fiber from tennis balls as the microfilaments are wearing down. So those are things to look for on those types of strings. On the other hand, polyester strings, or polys, are monofilaments that will not fray. They are very durable in that they generally won't break, but make no mistake, though a poly string might not break on the racket, it will lose tension and should be replaced long before the string itself actually snaps. On polys, look for notching, which will reduce the ability of the string to slide and then recoil back the method by which polys generate significant spin. Notching is particularly important to look out for because the cross section of many polys is not circular, but rather square or some other angulated shape. Any notching on strings with non-circular cross sections will impede the sliding even further. So the first thing I do is inspect the strings for fraying and notching as these are signs of wear and subsequent loss of playability. Next, I look at the racket as a whole and the string orientation. The mains and crosses should all be parallel, and after contact with the ball, we want the strings to snap back into this orientation. We want an even string bed, and that means that the mains are all running parallel to each other, and the crosses are all running parallel to each other. If you look at the string bed and the strings are all misaligned, bulging in some areas, too close together in others, that is telling you that the tension is not even throughout the racket bed, and it is a good reason to replace the strings. It is also telling you that the tension overall has been reduced because the strings themselves are not snapping back into place after contact with the ball. So let's look at some examples with my rackets.
Lastly, when assessing whether or not the strings need to be replaced, consider how they are playing. That is the biggest and perhaps most relevant question of whether or not they need to be replaced. If you aren't generating the top spin you normally do, for example, if you are hitting balls long because a normally loopy shot isn't looping down enough to fall in, that's a sign the liveliness of the string has been lost. A loss of accuracy is also another important sign. After hitting a few shots, looking at the string bed and seeing that the strings are not perfectly parallel would also demonstrate again that tension is being lost over the string bed itself. Looks like it'll be time to restring, and fortunately, there's a whole series that you can watch on how to do that. Now, it looks like I've got some rackets to string. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. This is Love 40 Tennis, where it is always triple break point.